Hello everyone and welcome to another mini sky tonight. So one of the questions I would sometimes get while working in the planetarium is I would sometimes get patrons that would come with a small rock in their hands and say, hey, I found this unique rock in my backyard that's unlike any other rock. Is it possible could it be a meteorite? And I often would get those kind of questions and Sadly, I know I don't have access to a lab to properly test it, and I sometimes would have to call on my colleagues in the astronomy and geology department to possibly do for further studies. So I decided to talk about what a meteorite is, where they come from, and how to do some of these small little tests that I normally do at the center on your own before you send it in to a specialist to do testing. Because I know with the SCOBY Education Center currently closed, I'm unable to do some of these tests for people. So allow me to show you some of the resources that you could do in order to test to see if you truly have a rock from space. Now, something to keep in mind, most finds of meteorites are very rare. Most of the items that usually fall either are burnt up in the atmosphere and or they don't even find a place to land safely and or sometimes they land in the most awkward places that nobody will find them. So let's talk about some of these rare finds and to see if by chance the small little rock that you've gone out in the wilderness and explored due to COVID and things of that nature could be indeed a meteorite. So what are meteorites? So let's talk about some terminology here. Now for most people, a, they think of like shooting stars and things like that or a rock from space that hit. So let's talk proper terms. The first term is called meteoroid. This is a piece of rock or debris that's out in space. That's just in random orbit that's floating around doing its own thing. A meteor is one piece of rock or debris that hits our atmosphere and starts to burn up and streaks across the sky. That's what we usually call sh shooting stars, hence why we have meteor showers, because those streaks streak across the sky and leave beautiful shooting stars for people to see. What we're wanting to talk about is a meteorite where the object is large enough or is made of certain materials to where even though it goes through our atmosphere, it finally reaches the ground and impacts. Now, some of these objects can be variant in size. They can be as small as a, a, your fist or they can be as big as a suitcase uh, and or even much larger, depending upon its size when it goes finally through the atmosphere. But most usually, found are roughly about the size of like a small river rock in terms of what most people usually find. But there are extreme cases and we'll cover those here later. So where do they come from? So where do these random space debris come from that ultimately hit the earth or streak across our sky? Well, some of them comes from the asteroids belts where some asteroids uh, smack into one another and cause debris and that debris flies off into space and just happens to interact with our planet. Sometimes planets and moons in our solar system during the early formations can blast off material as well as protoplanets smack into one another and send off debris into space which then can be collected elsewhere. And of course comets. Comets are, I sometimes like to call the tailgate parties of the solar system because when they streak across the sky they leave a bunch of debris behind which then the earth can go into that debris and that's where we usually get our meteor showers. Our meteor showers is basically the earth running into the literally the tailgate mess of the comets and collecting all the debris and it burns up in our atmosphere. But usually meteorites from comets tend to be rare because most of the material that is left out in space from these meteorites that hit for meteor showers usually tend to burn up in the atmosphere and they tend to be rare because most comets are mostly composed of gas or other types of materials that are frozen and they burn up. So for those that actually do impact, what are the different types? Because if we're going to try to check to see if we do indeed have a particular meteorite, let's check to see what kinds of meteorites there are. The first type is called stony. They're mostly composed of silicon, oxygen, hydrogen, magnesium, calcium, and aluminum, kind of like earth rocks, but they're mixed with different metals and sulfides. 
And often in the inside, they have what are known as chondrites, or they, these little circles, usually roughly about a couple of millimeters across, or barely a centimeter. And they're mostly composed of carbonaceous or carbon kind of chondrules and different types of materials. And or you can have what are called anchondrites, which is basically they, they look like pop circles or like little flecks. So like the image in the center there is basically an example of these popped circles because you can see a few of the circles in there, but most of it, it looks like flecks. Whereas in the chondrite circles, the image down in the bottom left is a very good example of a stony chondrite type of meteorite. So we have stony chondrite and stony anchondrite. Next, we have what is called stony iron, and they have iron in their cores because they're possibly created from planets or large asteroids that impacted and have a ton of iron. And you can definitely see the iron and the metallic mixture inside of it, especially on the image on the right. And that's a beautiful, nice chondrite right there. And, and of course, you can have meso, pardon me if I mispronounce it, mesosiderites and or palisites. Palisites are basically contain these beautiful green crystals in them, mostly composed of olivine in the nickel or iron mix. And what I mean by matrix, it literally looks like this lattice of some kind, and it really is pretty. And then of course you have pure iron or nickel. So these are, you have stony, stony iron, and iron which are mostly composed of iron or nickel and like as I mentioned on that lattice it, it looks like this beautiful lattice. So that's some some of the ways you can tell if indeed your rock is in a meteorite or not is what's going on on the inside and we'll talk about the tests that you could do because keep in mind when a meteorite goes through our atmosphere it becomes like a pressure cooker and so it literally is compressing this rock down and squeezing it and heating it up until it eventually impacts it on the earth. And because of this compression, it's heating up. So we're not looking for something that has sedimentary or anything. We're looking for something that has been cooked tremendously hot. Now, are there are some cases where people have found meteorites in the most extreme fashion. Like this was no denying that this was a meteorite whatsoever. The most extreme, one of the most extreme cases I was able to find was on November 30th on 1954 in Salacuga, Alabama. It was poor Miss Elizabeth Hodges who was just sitting out on the couch enjoying a nice evening when all of a sudden a meteorite literally came in through her roof and smacked her lying on the couch. I don't know about you, but the last thing I would want to think about when I'm laying on the couch sitting in quarantine is all of a sudden I have to worry about some piece of random space rock coming through my roof and smacking me. And this was a nine pound meteorite. So there was no denying that this indeed was a meteorite that came in through her ceiling. This was not something like a kid basically threw a rock into a room and no, it like literally went through three or four levels of her house in order to hit her. And it was crazy. The next extreme find we were is it was found in Antarctica. And the reason being why Antarctica is such a big deal is because Antarctica and the Arctic, like the North Pole and the South Pole, those are the places easiest to find meteorites because it's mostly covered in ice. If you find a random rock, chances are that rock was not a part of the land, original landscape. So chances are probably a meteorite that impacted and after sifting through, you realize, oh, this is a meteorite. One of the unique ones is that this meteorite, which was found in the Antarctic Allen Hills area, it blasted off from Mars over 16 million years ago. And when astronomers just did some studies on it, they noticed it contained biogenetic chemicals and microfossils possibly indicating the earliest forms of life on Mars that once was a long time ago. Maybe. And of course, this is always the fun one that I always enjoy talking about is this, this lovely couple who is in Peekskill, New York. They were coming back from a drive-in movie. Now for some of you young folks, you may not know what a drive-in movie is. 
It's basically you had this huge, gigantic screen and you drove up to the screen and watched a movie. And you got to have popcorn and sodas and things of that nature while in your car and you listen to the movie through your radio. And so when they were coming back from the drive-in movie, when all of a sudden the wife pointed up in the sky and says, hey, what's that bright spot up there? And sure enough, no sooner has she mentioned that, the object impacted the back of their car. And it left this, as you can see, this big, huge gaping hole. So this wasn't just some random event where a person tossed a rock or another card flicked a rock over to them or things of that nature. No, though, this would hit pretty hard, as you can tell by the damage. And it was about 26 pounds. Fortunately, the guy was able to sift it through the back of his car, but as you can see, the car was irreparable. And needless to say, the insurance didn't do a lot of, in terms of claims. Surprise, surprise. But fortunately, he was able to talk to a couple of colleagues and he was able to sell the meteorite for $69,000 and the car itself to a museum for $10,000. Well, over the price of what the car was originally worth. I don't know about you. I, I would consider it a nice fair trade. So those are extreme finds. So these were like no doubt about it, this was a meteorite. And those are even more rare than actually finding a meteorite. So now let's talk meteorite tests. So these are some tests that you can do from your own home before you send a meteorite in to be tested to see if indeed you have a space rock. First of all, it, do a weight test. Is it light or is it heavy for its size? Second, what does it look like on the outside? What are the more prominent features? Just kind of like write down some of the prominent features of this rock, take pictures of it. Do some other tests with it. Magnetic, can you stick a magnet onto it and will it attract the magnet to it? And lastly is what is known as the window test, and I'll describe what the window is. But basically we're taking a small little window out of the meteorite to take a look inside the meteorite. So let's do some of these small little tests. First of all, weight. Now I have sometimes gotten people who handed me pumice stones and say, wow, this is a unique type of rock. Where did this come from? turns out it was a pumice stone or a volcanic type of stone because pumice stones tend to be light for their size. So when you hold this in your hand, does it feel like relatively decent for its size? Does it feel light for its size or does it feel like really dense and heavy? Most of your nickel iron meteorites are going to feel incredibly dense in your hand. Like you see something really tiny and just do a gut check. It's like, whoa, this is incredibly heavy. Like I shouldn't be able to hold on to this for a long period of time, even though it's so tiny kind of weight. Also, keep in mind, if it's light, it could be one of two things, volcanic pumice rock, which I've gotten a couple of them, and or earthy type of material, like a common one that I often get is called slag, which is basically the runoff of construction slash runoff of like um, explosion areas and things of that nature and it's like this nasty chemical stuff that and images of it is on the right it's basically a composition and it's it, it's really weird but many people think because of its weird appearance it is indeed a meteorite but it's actually not also if it flakes off or leaves streaks in your hand like on the thing you can do is just simply take it put it on a piece of paper and just gently drag it across the piece of paper if it leaves flakes or if it leaves streaks, chances are it's probably not a meteorite. It's made of mo because most meteorites, like I said, they're a pressure cooker, so it creates like this cr hard crust on the outside, so it's not going to streak very much. And what I mean by streaks, I'm not talking like the little thin lines. No, no, no. I'm like talking like sidewalk chalk kind of streaks. So if it leaves like a big, huge mark, chances are it's probably not a meteorite. Next, surface test. What does it look on the, like on the outside? For most meteorites, so th it, these are the ones that have like prominent features for meteorites. On the surface, they have like what kind of looks like big, huge thumbprint dents, not holes, dents. So kind of like on the image above. So they look like they have like these dips or like somebody took a scoop and scooped out a bunch of the meteorite. These are created when like air pockets around the meteorite create and then they pop and then create these big, huge, kind of like bubble-like dents. 
it has a very dark coating because like I said, heat pressure and it kind of sometimes looks like an eggshell. You kind of see like these white crystallines. Think of it kind of like a creme brulee where basically you take a, uh, a flame and put it on top of custard and kind of creates this crystalline kind of structure, kind of like that same thing. And it can be relatively smooth on the outside. It doesn't have necessarily a lot of sharp edges or it's not rough, but it's mostly relatively smooth on the outside. Not completely smooth like a river rock, but relatively smooth like it has a few bumps and stuff, but not sharp. So these are non-meteorites, or sometimes it's like what people call meteorongs. These are not meteorites. One, they're completely smooth. If it's completely smooth and it looks like you could pick it up from the bottom of a river or a lake or something, chances are it's not a meteorite. If it has thick veins or linear features, like the image on the right, chances are those are not cor correct either. It's like all of a sudden if it looks like it has layers and stuff like that, layers are only created by sedimentary uh, gravity, so chances are it's probably not a meteorite either. If it has air pockets or like deep holes or other things of that nature, like the pumice stone I showed you, if it has deep holes, there's no air in space. Sorry. So therefore, it shouldn't have all these big, huge air pockets and holes. So that's the surface kind of test. So, the, so basically, if it looks on a surface kind of test and it's not smooth and it's rugged and it has chips in it, or if it has sharp edges and things of that nature, chances are it's probably not a meteorite. Next, a magnetic test. Will a magnet track to it? Now I'm not talking about a magnet sticking to it because some types of meteorites, like the stony iron meteorites, will attract a magnet but it won't be strong enough to keep it attached there. So the best way to do the magnetic test is to literally hang a magnet from a string and bring the magnet, bring the object to the magnet, not the magnet to the object, because the magnet, sometimes you can't tell if it's being attracted or not. Whereas then if you bring the object to the magnet, especially if it's hanging from a string, you can see the string deflect to go towards the object. So that's definitely how you can tell that there's some meteorite type of materials inside. Also, I would recommend using rare earth magnets rather than your fridge magnets. Fridge magnets tend to work, but not, are not as great as rare earth magnets. Since they have a much more powerful magnetic pull, they're easier to see in terms of that deflection as well as it's easier for these rare earth magnets to attract to something that's barely made of uh, iron or nickel kind of compounds in the meteorite. Do not use flat picture magnets. I know these are magnets that are used everywhere. People uh, get them from businesses to stick onto their fridge. And yes, they do a great job of sticking on a fridge. They are terrible at sticking on to other different types of materials. So use rare earth magnets and again, put it on a string and bring the object to it. If it deflects, chances are there's probably me uh, metallic material in it and it could be a meteorite. But however, be careful because there's other types of materials known as magnetite, which is a material only created on earth. So this is just one test. If it passes this one test, keep in mind, there's a couple of other tests that you still need to do. You still have the weight and the surface test. So this is test number three. So test number four is what is known as the window test. We're gonna take a look of what's on the inside. Now, if it has been cracked or open, don't use the open face as a guide because an open face usually means that it's been exposed to the elements and we don't want outside elements giving us an indicator of what could be on the inside. So what we're going to do is grind away a small two centimeter little window into the sample. And you can either use a belt sander or a grinder, a file of some kind to gently do a little tiny window, not too thick, not too deep into this, but enough to get a nice indicator of what's going on inside the rock. And you need to do it to a kind of like a a fine polish area because you don't want it bumpy or, uh, bumpy or rigid of any kind. If you're wanting to use a belt sander or a grinder, 40 grit or better works great. And just be careful as you use power tools as they always say. 
So look on the inside. For a meteorite, you'll get what is, what, uh, what is called, I apologize, my German is terrible, Wimmenstatten patterns, I think is how you pronounce it. It's these beautiful Latin patterns if it's indeed interlaced with iron or nickel. So if you look on the inside and you see this kind of uh, beautiful lattice pattern, chances are it's probably a meteorite because that lattice pattern only comes when nickel and iron are heated up to high extreme pressures but then greatly cooled on upon impact. Also you get these tiny chondrules. Now keep in mind these chondrules are only a couple of millimeters across, maybe a centimeter at most. Nothing large. Not like your uh, geos where you crack it open and there are big huge crystals and things like that. No, no, no. These are tiny like little millimeter to a centimeter little bubbles or the flex or the popped bubbles. Chances are if it's not a meteorite you see air pockets or voids inside. Like if there's air pockets, again, there's no air in space, so chances are it's probably not a meteorite. If you see layering or streaks like sedimentary rocks, not a, if you see large crystals, because I've sometimes gotten samples to where there's like huge quartz inside, and they're like, wow, this is, and including somebody sent in a geode, it was a beautiful geode, don't get me wrong, but it was just like, no, this is not a meteorite because large crystals take long time to form, and and they are formed over long periods of time and heat, whereas in these are formed very quickly when they streak through the atmosphere. If it's red on the inside, chances are it's not a meteorite because oxidation doesn't occur in space. And another test, one thing you could possibly do is if you have a little bit of acid, is take like some of the flex that you did from grinding it off and put a little drop of acid on it. Does it react to acid? Most carbon types of materials react to acid very well. But suppose you did these tests and it's looking promising. So what are the next steps? Well, the next steps is to allow a professional lab to do some research for you. There are some labs that will take tests on your suspected meteorites and will return the sample. One test site I was able to find was like meteoritetesting.org. And of course, uh, you could also go to Robert Haig, who is a leading expert on meteorites. He has this amazing collection. If you ever want to check out his uh, collection, go to meteorites.com and you can see his beautiful collection. You can contact him and possibly he can even do some testing for you. So these are just some of the things that you could do to test to see, hey, did I find a meteorite? Okay, maybe. So well, here's some of the tests that you can do from your own home. And if it is indeed a possibility, cool. Send it in and if they get it and if you get a positive result, I would love to hear about it. In fact, if you do send in a sample, leave it down in the comments below. I would love to hear if somebody does indeed have a rock from space. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down in the comments below. If you have any suggestions for any future topics you would love for me to cover over, leave it down in the comments as well. Also, if you are parents that would like to get your kids into activities before the school session starts, we have what is called futurereadysa.org, which allows your kids to do these fun interactive types of educational things to keep your kids engaged and for them to earn badges. So that way that keeps them wanting to come back. It's basically gamifies learning. So if you wanna check it out, I recommend futurereadysa.org and I can leave a link down in the description below. I helped out with the Astronomy Plus mission, so if you wanna check that out, it would be awesome as well. And until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and as always, never stop learning.